they got really quiet, that means it's my turn. Okay, if I can remember what I did with my bulletin, we're going to have some announcements. Good morning. Good morning. We will have time later on in the service for us to give our praises for things that have happened this week as well as our uh, people that we need to pray for. But right now we're going to go over announcements, uh, things that we need to um, talk about. The first one is the church council meeting directly following worship service today. Grab a snack and meet in the fireside room. And if you don't show up, we will talk about you. And I will, and I will nominate you for something. Um, coffee fellowship will also take place. Um, don't forget this week we have the soup kitchen at 530. The summer potluck is at uh, 6 o'clock. Soup kitchen is on Tuesday. The potluck is on Thursday. Also, don't forget about the prayer team. We're going to talk quite a bit about that later. What announcements do you have this morning for the congregation? I don't think I need this here, Mike. Yes, you but, do. Do. but next Sunday evening is uh, the old fashioned ice cream and music night at Westwood Church. Some of you will probably remember that the last Sunday in July, in July, that was a tradition for the churches to meet, and it's an outdoor service, so you might want a jacket under a sweater. You might want to bring an easy chair. There will be some chairs there. At 5.30, the ice cream will be served, and at 6 o'clock, uh, the Cornerstone Gospel Singers will perform. And they will probably do that for about one hour. You are welcome. There's no charge. They do take up a free will offering for the singers. They don't put, take up any offering for the ice cream. That's just thrown in. So. <laughs> they gave me a poster to give to the church, and I'll put the poster up, and that is next Sunday night. Anybody else have any announcements? Okay, next. 
next thing is that when we get done with Michael's house, then we're going to be kicking into LifeWise Ministries and LifeWise. And what I'm, we're very excited after all this time, a lot of prayer, a lot of discussion with my number one partner, that this last week we officially engaged an awesome company, a strong Christian company by the name of J.D. McGee Engineering. <laughs> and they will be our engineer officially for LifeWise and LifeWise Ministries as we move forward. And you'll try to avoid any of those pitfalls that uh, I have a habit of sometimes falling into. So anyway, Chloe Chambers here is going to be our social media director for LifeWise Ministries. campus and she, when she gets up and running you'll be able to go online and watch the progress of what we're doing on there so you don't have to try to corral me or Gail and ask hey what's going on you'll be able to see what's going on she'll keep you updated on what we're doing what we're trying to accomplish things like that so this is getting pretty exciting in our lives and uh, so stay tuned and we'll see how, this, how the Lord leads us in this manner You know, when you're doing the uh, basketball goal, there's also a basketball goal at the parsonage. And I'm not going to wear it out, okay? <laughs> Lisa, do you have any plans for any you know, basketball? No, well, she's, she says no, too, so it's got wheels on it, so we might bring it over and put it mid court or something, and we'd have three basketball goals. Are any other in that? Let's go together to God in prayer. Gracious God, as we begin our worship this day, we ask for the spirit of your presence among us. May our singing, may our praying, may our reading from your holy word always be done in a manner pleasing to you. Send down your spirit that we may worship you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And we will now turn the service over to our music team and be Stand and sing with us.
be seated. We come now to our time of prayer and praises. Um, we want to ask you, the members of the congregation, where have you seen God's hand move in your life or in someone else's life this past week? The praises that I have to uh, give to you are that uh, Vacation Bible School was last week. Oh my goodness, that was one of the most amazing things I have seen since I've been here. I've got the bracelet to prove that I went. <laughs> we went for the barbecue, and Peter and Thaddeus and Theodore were our workers. Is there anyone else that were workers? Yeah. Who had kids in vacation Bible school? If your kids and your grandkids went to vacation Bible school, there were over 180 in vacation Bible school. We used to get 20 and think we were doing great. There were 180. And I've got pictures, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to show them or not. I'd have to check with them and make sure it's okay. You've got to be careful about showing pictures of kids up on the internet. I want to put them on Facebook, but I didn't have an opportunity to get permission to do that. So God is good all the time. Do you have any praises to bring before the congregation this morning? I love it when one of them raises their hand and the other one looks like, what are they going to say? <laughs> I'm going to go first. Um, bear with me, I'm a little emotional. This, I shared with you a few weeks ago that my mother went under hospice care and she's been in her decline. This past week, she's been unresponsive, um, can't move, can't eat, uh, can't drink, wasn't urinating, nothing. So the family gathered yesterday, every one of us, and we said our goodbyes, and um, it was a really heavy, heavy day. Um, and this morning at 6 o'clock, about, telephone rang, and it was Willamette Springs Memory Care, and my heart just sunk into my tummy. And they said, you may want to come because your mother is up and in a wheelchair and sitting in the dining room and she's eating applesauce. So it may be the rally, but um, I'm gonna take it because today my heart is just full of joy. I've got one more day, that one more day that you always want with your parents. So I just want to share my joy with you. God is good. Uh, if you remember about uh, two or three months ago, we talked about uh, the Children's Evangelism Fellowship uh, asking the request being to use the lodge for their summer camp. And so the lodge was able to grant that free of charge. So this coming week is when that whole group comes out and gets set up. In fact, this afternoon I'll open the lodge for, so they can do their pre-setup. So they'll be out there all, all week, free of charge, and uh, this is gonna be like at least a couple hundred kids. And so again, I'm gonna remind you, most of you already know this, the Scout Lodge started right here in this church. You know, and in 17 years, we've gone to this point where we're able to offer a free week for somebody to use. And, uh, you know, I think that's awesome that uh, when you listen to the Lord and you follow the path He lays out, that, and you stay faithful, things like this come out and you see the rewards. And so it's really awesome to be, able to, to be able to offer that and then to be able to see it through. And, uh, and then we also have two of our church members. <laughs> Again, we have Becky and Matt Wilson. They'll be out there on Tuesday doing a little conservation project so those little kids can see what we're trying to do out there at Scout Lodge and get their hands dirty a little bit. So anyway, praise the Lord for all that. I have written down Luke and Peter are having something to do with that too. The email I got said they're working out there. Oh, awesome. God awesome. is good. I just, I'm having trouble keeping up with all the stuff you people do. I mean, it's, I didn't even know about this group until this past week. I didn't know this camp was going on. And, 
and I've got a notebook and it's just filling up with well they do this and they do that and they do this and they do that and it's, it's just amazing just trying to keep up I'm getting tired just learning about all this stuff <laughs> there's something to do <laughs> yeah then you really get worn out how about prayer requests I've got a couple of prayer requests uh, we've been in contact with Mike this week and they still have not heard anything from Carmela I, the way I understood, understand him, it's like the next week or so that Carmela goes on the FBI database, which will give uh, her picture will be go out to all the um, all law enforcement around the United States. And we'll see if that turns something up. So you will want to keep continue to keep uh, that family in your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, uh, you heard. Uh, when his mother's passed away, I understand they're having the services tomorrow, and then Tom and Glenda will be flying back tomorrow afternoon, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, do you have any other prayer requests? Okay, I want to invite you then to bow in body or spirit as we go once again before the altar of God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to ask once again for the presence of your spirit among us. Fill us again this day with the wonder of your glory, with an overwhelming sense of your presence, and with a desire to draw close to you as you draw close to us. Father, remind us again about the important relationship between us. Father, also make us aware of the also important relationship between what we believe and what we do. Help us to be concerned about what we do, how we go about it. Make us sensitive to the way in which we live on your earth how we make our living, how we handle our finances, what we say to others by the way we behave. Give us your grace to guide us in all the decisions of our lives and the way we treat others around us. Father, let us live carefully each day, measuring our responses to all events and shape our existence with love and thoughtfulness. Teach us what is really important and not just urgent. Show us how to make the most of our possibilities. Teach us to sing and dance with joy for the good fortune of our neighbors and friends. Show us how to be compassionate and caring for all those whose names we lift up to you in prayer for your presence in your healing. Father, give us above all an appreciation for the work of Christ in our behalf, who has died on the cross to save us from sin and prepare the way for eternal life. It is in the name of our Lord Jesus we lift our prayer, and we honor him by praying as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
July is two years old and going in 25. Um, Caden, another boy, he is two months and one week old. And you know how babies are. It's eat, dirty diaper, sleep, dirty diaper, and then repeat day, all day and all night. That's, that's my reason. today is Psalm 52, and you can find it in your Old Testament in the Pew Bible on page 521. And this is titled, Judgment on the Deceitful. To the leader, a masculine of David, when Doi the Edomite came to Saul and said to him, David has come to the house of Amalek. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly? All day long you are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, you worker of treachery. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that devour, O deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch and tear you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear, and will laugh at the evildoer, saying, See the one who would not take refuge in love, but trusted in abundant riches and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name, for it is good.
God, as we return back to you now, a portion of the many blessings that you have given us. We ask that you would accept these, our gifts, that you would bless them and that you would multiply them for your glory and for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
somehow or another, we always find time to do the things that are important to us. The things that are the most important, we seem to always find time to do that. Because what we do is we make a mistake in trying to understand what's really important. Because what we do is we take the stuff that's urgent and we label that as important. And we say this is important because it's urgent. We don't realize that there's a big difference between what's important and what's urgent. In the uh, business world, um, from books I've read in seminars, I found this thing, it's called the Eisenhower Square, or it's also called the Priorities Square. And if we can show that up here, I want to show you what an Eisenhower Square is. Have you ever seen this? If I had my little pointer, this would really be, I've got one of those little pointers, but I, I thought that might be tacky, so I didn't bring that. Okay, this is called a priority matrix. Depends on how important things are, or it depends on how urgent things are. Way up here in the upper left-hand corner are things that are both urgent and important. And what we tend to do is we put everything in this box. This is what we're doing. This is important and it's urgent. And we don't realize that there are things that are not that important. But people tell you how urgent they are. And so you have to do them first. Well, that's not how to be productive. The way you do this is you do the important, urgent things first. And when you stop and think about it then, you begin to realize there's not that many things that are really important that are urgent. There are things that are urgent, but they're not important. You probably need to get to them, but they're not that important. There are things that are very, very important, but they're not urgent, and that's the ones that we tend to put on the back burner that we shouldn't. And the fact is that if you pay attention to what's important, especially the ones that are important and not urgent, that's going to keep everything from piling up into this first square over here. Let me give you, let me give you an example. You need to get the oil changed in your car on a regular basis. That's important. It may not be urgent, but it's important. Now, if you don't do it and your car stops running, then it becomes urgent and important at the same time because you didn't do it back when it was just important. When you are sick and you have to go, I mean, when you're really sick and you have to go to urgent care or the emergency room, that's important and urgent. But if the reason you are sick is because you had been taking care of yourself for the last six months and eating whatever the heck you wanted to, and then you're sick, you didn't do the stuff. And that pushed the important stuff back. We're going to go ahead and leave that thing up there for you to look at it because I'm fixing to give you what is known as the application of this. I want to go to our text this morning. This morning we encountered two sisters and they were kind of in the same situation. Each made a different choice in that situation. And I think we can learn something from their responses to help us in distinguishing between what is really important and what is urgent. Mary and Martha were sisters and their brother was Lazarus you remember Lazarus, he's the guy that Jesus called out of the grave and raised him from the dead. Well, Lazarus was the brother. Mary and Martha were the two sisters. And um, this story that I read is from Luke. Luke talks about this story. Luke never 
says anything about Lazarus being raised from the dead. The book of John is the only place that you read Lazarus was raised from the dead. Do you not think that that's important enough to be in all the gospel? Well, it's not. John is the only one. There's a very specific reason that the raising of Lazarus only appears in the book of John. But that's not the topic of the sermon, so we're not going to talk about that. You can ask me later, and I'll tell you. It is not unlikely at all that Jesus was at the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus quite often because they lived in Bethany, which is just outside of Jerusalem, and he was really very good friends of theirs. He showed up at their house quite a bit. He was a, he was a regular house guest. And that uh, notwithstanding, word comes that Jesus and his disciples are on their way to the house. Martha freaks out. The house is a mess. There's nothing to eat. What are we going to feed all these people? I understand that Martha's going to be concerned about this at that time. It's pretty legitimate. She wanted to be a gracious host, and after all, in this area of Palestine, about this time, graciousness was incredibly important. If you had a guest come to your home, you treated them like royalty, and all these people were coming. Jesus might have had 15 or 20 people with him. He didn't just wander around by himself. He always brought a crowd, and now he's showing up in Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house. I know what would happen in my house if I came in and said, honey, I've got 15 people coming over right now. <laughs> of course, I kind of live with a Martha, I think. I'll come over and tell her, hey, so-and-so's coming over here in a few minutes. And she starts cleaning the house and figuring out what she's going to feed them and, and all that stuff. And, and I wouldn't ever say that that's a bad thing. It's important. Martha's plans to be hospitable to Jesus and his people were important. But the problem, the way Luke points out, is that Martha was distracted by that. That became her only focus. That became important, and it became urgent to the exclusion of the fact that Jesus was coming. She failed to note the importance of just stopping and enjoying the relationship with Jesus. Her service took precedence over her Savior. Here's a lesson for all of us. The urgent will always distract you from the important. <coughs> Martha's distraction not only caused her to miss the deeper relationship between her and Jesus, but it also disrupted the relationship that she had with Mary. Mary found that which was most important, according to Jesus. But Martha did not. Martha complained, Lord, tell Mary to help me here. I'm slaving away, and she's just sitting there. That's outrageous. Tell her to come help me with all this that I've got to do. Jesus simply gave Martha a gentle rebuke about being consumed with the urgent and missing the important. I've been there. You've been there. We've all been there, and a few of us even have the t-shirt to prove that we've been there. I could go a lot more into this dynamics of the encounter with Jesus, but Tom put a clock on the wall back there. <laughs> so I know I've got to move on. Here are, some, here are some ways that we can keep that from happening to us. And I'm going to tell you some of the things that I do that seem kind of to help. First, create an artificial deadline. I do that for my sermons. When is my sermon due? It's due about 9.30 on Sunday mornings. That's when it's due. But if I don't set a deadline of Thursday afternoon, I may be sitting down here writing while we're singing the first song. And that's, that's not going to make a very good sermon. It will become urgent then and will cause a lot of stress. It, 
doesn't matter what else I do during the week. If I'm not prepared to come up here and talk to you folks on Sunday morning, then the SBRC has one of those emergency meetings. <laughs> if, if you're working in a job and you want to take off early for the weekend, maybe, or you're not going to create an earlier deadline to try and get all your work done, and if you don't get it done when you come back on Monday morning, you've got a lot more work to do. The second way you can keep urgent from crowding out the important, the important is to be selective with saying yes. Now, I realize that's an incredibly dangerous thing for a pastor to say, especially this time of year, because it's going to be a couple of months. I'm going to be coming to quite a few of you and saying, you know, we need someone on this committee. What do you think? So when I come to you at that time, you forget immediately what I'm fixing to say. Because okay? what I'm fixing to say is um, the largest barrier to a fruitful life is not commitment, but overcommitment. Saying yes to everything. Saying yes without looking and seeing what's important or not. You've heard that uh, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Well, that's pretty well true. But we think we can have it all and we think we can do it all. And we can't. Sometimes we just need to learn to say, I can't do that right now. But when you say no, you're going to hurt some people's feelings. You're going to upset some people. But before you say yes, you think, am I able to commit myself to this project or this job or this thing that I'm being asked to do? And if you are overwhelmed and you're sitting there thinking, how in the world am I going to get this done on top of everything else I have to do? Maybe you need to say, not right now. I'll think about it and maybe I'll get to it later. Now that really doesn't apply to the sitting at the back table this morning because both of them at the last minute got contacted and said, can you come in and do that? Thankfully, both of you fine ladies said yes, so we get to have worship this morning. So it doesn't count for y'all. <laughs> the third way that you can keep the urgent from crowding out the important is do first what matters most. Do first what matters most. That's, I think, the purest interpretation of what we read in our gospel lesson today. Mary chose to do first what mattered most, to be with Jesus. And we just kind of read that and we say, okay, good for Mary. She did what she needed to do. What we don't think about and what you don't realize when you read this passage what Mary did was pretty radical. The reason it was radical was she went and sat at the feet of Jesus as if she were a disciple in a period of time where there was a patriarchal society and women just didn't do such a thing. Women stayed in the kitchen. Women served the men as the men sat at the feet of Jesus. But Mary walked over and sat down at the feet of Jesus. Don't lose track of the significance of Jesus praising Mary for doing that. That's a totally, completely new concept for these people. I know we get distracted by all the items on our to-do list. I know that we let our time with Jesus just sort of go to the side. It sometimes just doesn't seem like spending time, especially in prayer and worship with Jesus. It's so important, but it's not urgent. Until until we get that call in the middle of the night it says this is all for sir. so and so it's about your dog 
until we find ourselves sitting in the doctor's office waiting for that news to come and we know we're not going to want to hear that. When that time comes when we are talking with someone that is near and dear to us and they let us know that they do not want to be near and dear to us anymore. It is those times that we want to run to Jesus then. And then is Jesus there? Yes. He's still going to be there. Jesus is always going to be there when you call out.